Hey, what's up? My name is Zealand. I am a competitor in the Football Manager Championship that is happening right now. Uh, ad, this video came out about 30 minutes before the streamer showdown started. It's the second competitive Football Manager Tournament of the year. And while it's out, if you're watching it, I mean, maybe you clicked on it in the first 30 minutes, but, uh, in which case, I love you. But if you're watching it after the first 30 minutes for the next four hours or maybe even longer, after that, I will be competing in the regular season phase of the Football Manager Championship and uh, we'll be trying to make it to the playoff phase, obviously, which of course we're gonna do. You're gonna see the team, you're gonna feel the strategy of competitive football manager. Uh, we are ready to compete in the second KFC streamer showdown. Uh, I'm trying to win myself some more KFC swag and uh, let's be honest, some prize money because daddy needs a new camera. That's not a weird thing to say. Roll the stick. So like I said, if you are watching this video right now, click the Twitch link down in the description. Uh, you can come watch this live, but you probably wanna finish the video first because then you'll know not only what is happening, but what team I have drafted, uh, what team I have plunked from the, the, the nether regions of Football Manager. That, what, what? So if you already know what the streamer showdown is, I'm gonna quickly explain the rules. You can skip that as well and we can get right into the team. But the rules, we have a draft. We have 500 million pounds available, but since I'm the only non uh, British person in the draft. It's 643 million US dollars available. 18 players, uh, 17 have to be from the Premier League and you get one wild card pick. And the spoiler here is that of course, my wild card pick did not go horribly well. So this draft a little different than what we've encountered before. Uh, and we came in with a strategy, you do your research, you come up with players that, that are value, but because we're locked into one league in the Premier League, there are only so many players that are actually good that aren't so expensive that you end up not being able to acquire the superstars that might be able to help you along your way. We got a gift initially though, because we ended up getting the second pick and the first pick seemed obvious to everyone, except for this guy, Dr. Benji. He had the first pick, he picked Timo Werner. Now Timo Werner scored a bunch of goals against me in the first season of the showdown. So maybe I'm not onto something here, but our second pick seemed pretty obvious. I don't care what, I don't care if we restart this. I already picked Van Dyke, so I have to get him I, if we restart. Already... Not only is this an anchor that I can build my defense around, it, it is also an anchor that I can build my set pieces around, which let's be honest, you know, talent wins games, set pieces win championships. And this is the start of a team that's going to be rather dynamic on set pieces. But this is great. This is not something, your, your ability to adapt in these drafting situations, you have one minute once your pick is up. I did not plan on being in the first two picks to be able to get the obvious best defender that's available, maybe in the entire world, definitely in the prim. I had an idea of what tactic I wanted to involve myself in. We're definitely looking to be a little bit more defensive. I kind of soured on two striker tactics after our serious struggles in season one in terms of the competitive PVP version of this football manager match engine. And so we were looking to build a strong midfield, an intelligent defense, because as you might remember, if you watch season one, we were a bit undone by um, chronic stupidity. The core of this strong midfield would be, uh, I don't know, somebody that's very good at passing the ball, separating yourself from the current trash that's going towards him in real life at the moment. Tiago's still a very good player on football manager. Boom, check, somebody can move the ball well. Then we needed somebody who is a workhorse that can win the ball and play those deeper lying midfield roles, even all the way back to center back. Wilfred and Didi, boom, check. Those are two of the three essential parts to what is going to be a three-man midfield. In what shape exactly? <laughs> You'll have to watch to find out, but we needed somebody that could get forward and make some plays. So how about Phil Foden? All these guys costing me less than 50 million US dollars, which is of course the value that I'm seeing on the screen. And I'm assuming they're all less than 40 million pounds. Actually, I know that for a fact. <laughs> it's a high quality trio. We also made a very early pick that surprised a lot of people, but if we're looking for a forward that can drop in and get themselves involved, how about Shea Adams? for 9 million US dollars, which is like six and a half a million, not six and a half pounds, six and a half million pounds. That was our, one of our earliest picks actually. Is that's a player with 15 passing, 15 vision, good athleticism, and the, the ability to finish the play off as well. Criminally underrated. And there's a reason that I picked Shea Adams early and we ended up getting somebody like Harry Kane towards the end because there are more people that are gonna be likely looking for that bargain early where there's a couple of strikers. If I don't get Harry Kane, I can get Aguero. If I don't get you know, Aguero, obviously they're not the exact same type of player, but you can get a Firmino, a Sala. There are weirdly a 
lot of incredibly high value players that offer the same basic level of skill set. There are not a lot of strikers under 10 million that offer the skill set that Jay Adams has. It's this weird world you live in when you're making the draft. And we did have to sacrifice in other areas because we would also end up with a late pick of Kevin De Bruyne. He has no idea what he's just done. He has absolutely no idea what he's just done. He quite simply could not have timed that any better. That is incredible that he just managed to do that. I actually, absolutely incredible. Now, Kane, obviously, as you just saw, was not on my radar, right? Kane was a player that I never considered drafting. We wanted Lionel Messi from the beginning, another type of player like Shea Adams who could drop in and make plays while the midfield moved around them and uh, a little more total football-esque than Erling Holland and Jamie Vardy, who I had at the top last time. And I just realized neither of them could involve themselves too well, so I wanted people that could get involved. But we missed out on that. Our wild card was going to be Lionel Messi. That was the plan from the beginning, and we just... Uh, he went the pick before. We should have we should have picked him earlier, and we didn't. Hindsight's always twenty twenty. But you have to be happy, and what I don't think a lot of people are talking about is the fact that Harry Kane has 18 passing and 18 vision. He is a very good passer and somebody that when he drops next to Phil Foden and Kevin De Bruyne and you're playing around with those three guys and Tiago's a little farther back and indeed he's eating up the space right you've got you've got a real offense the thought process on the wingers is we were looking for athletes that can dribble and Alan St. Maximin was a check Nicholas Pepe check these are guys that they pick the ball up and they are threatening you have to account for them absolutely menacing i mean say maximin's got what 19 dribbling it's terrifying and nicolas pepe no matter what you think about him in real life does have the skill on the ball and the athleticism to be incredibly threatening both of these guys can also play the wing on either side whether they're playing with their dominant foot on the outside or their dominant foot on the inside which gives me a lot of fluidity especially when we add ryan frazier behind them who is essentially the same thing for cheaper can play on both sides and is a running dribbler we also picked up adama Traore because well, then we go to our defense, which we didn't talk about after drafting Virgil van Dyke. But I did mention that we wanted intelligent players. So what we were looking for were well-rounded, intelligent players that weren't going to Chris Smalling it up when we get to the knockout stages, assuming we get to the knockout stages. But shoot, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're getting to the knockout stages. Okay, we, we, we barely got there last time. We will get there comfortably this time because we have a defense with Matt Doherty and Luke Shaw at the fullback positions. While these guys are not explosive, dynamic offensive players, they're smart. They're not unathletic and they're good at defense. And while Nathan Ake is not a tall dude who is always maligned for the fact that he's a little short and he only has 12 jumping reach, he's very smart. He's athletic and he's good at defense. And when he's next to a guy like Virgil van Dijk, we can give up a little physicality. They're backed up by Connor Cody and Ben White, who are smart, not outstandingly athletic or tall, but they're decent at all of those things and good at defense. We're deep here because honestly, suspensions are really easy to accumulate in this tournament uh, you have these matches that are coming very quickly having the ability to rotate having the ability to spell people that are on suspension is valuable which is why the versatility that we sport uh, at almost every position is great let's go ahead and grab zach stefan now get our goalkeeper into the team uh we don't want to get penalized so we take robin olsen's our backup goalkeeper and alas we have a team the lineups that we're going to be looking to go for are a narrow 4 one 2 one 2 uh, where we play with Harry Kane and Shea Adams up top, uh, where we play with four midfielders and essentially use the quality we have. We can also drop into a 4-5-1 or 4-3-3. Uh, that 4-3-3 can encompass uh, one of the forwards. It can encompass the talented wingers that we have. It can encompass Adama Traore just running over or around or using his oil to just kind of slip by. That's what we were drafting for. That's what I've been experimenting in PvP, Football Manager 21 match engines. And we're coming for the crown. We won a championship last year. Uh, we are looking to win another championship this year. We would, if we won a second, would be the second most, second most awarded Football Manager player in the world. So I'm recording this You're right after drafting. This is what we're thinking. I'm really happy with who we got. Uh, the, the, the lowdown seemed to agree as well. But as, as we know, we were picked as the favorites after the draft consistently. And we ended up after a promising start winning two of our first three 
losing four of our last five and the other one was a draw that we had to come from behind to achieve so it all comes down to how you handle things in the league we fought our way out of the relegation playoff and got into the bracket before chris smalling well showed up we'll be influential on set pieces with van dyke and kane we're going to be able to play a total football fluid situation with threatening players you have to respect on the outside and obviously the main threat coming up the middle from a talented deep midfield and Harry Kane. I'm also the belief that Shea Adams is going to be great. I won't be afraid to spell Harry Kane with him because depth is key. The matches come almost every three days once you get into the heart of the season and the heart of the knockouts, and we will be ready. I'll see you then. Now you can click the link in the description uh, to go to Twitch and watch the regular season. The, the finals are tomorrow too, so your weekend has just been planned for you. Congratulations. Excited.